Welcome to the Don't Call Me Skinny podcast. I'm your host, Coach Sarah J with CP Fitness. I'm an online nutrition coach and trainer who tells it like it is. I work with women all over the world through my online programs. Each Wednesday, I drop an episode dissecting diet culture norms to give you the facts and reality of nutrition and fitness and how they fit into your world. The current diet culture needs to be revamped, and I'm here to set it straight. My passion is teaching you how to take control over your nutrition, fitness, and overall mindset with my no BS approach. Please remember that this podcast is for educational purposes only and should never be used as medical advice. If you like what you hear today, I'd love for you to leave a review, a rating, share it with a friend, and as always, please keep coming back for more. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's do it. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of Don't Call Me Skinny. I really was hoping that I could maybe hit my 200th 200th episode before my two-year anniversary, but I don't think I'm going to cut it. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. I might hit it before the first of the year, but I don't think, I I think I'm like four short, (laughs) maybe, um, of, uh, of my two, of my two year anniversary. And I haven't decided if I'm going to do anything. I did it something last year for it, but I haven't decided quite yet if I'm going to do anything for it this year. Um, because it's, it kind of falls right in the middle of all the holidays. Um, and I've just done my black Friday stuff. And so I haven't decided yet what I want to do. Um, so that being said, black Friday is live you guys. So here's the deal. I don't like to just, uh, force decisions on people. I don't like, I I was taught to do this originally and I just dislike it. It always made me feel like it, it icky. It made me feel like ick. That's what it made me feel like. So I stopped doing this. So that's why I currently have Black Friday deals out because I don't want, um, I don't want people to have to feel like they have to make a decision like in the snap of a blink and a eye, right? I, I want people to have time to think, time to talk it over with their spouse. And I know it's hard because it seems like this is probably the worst time of year to actually do something like this, right? To spend money when we're already spending money or to dedicate myself to something that, you know, is more time and I'm already stretched thin and all these things. But I promise you, I always say, if you can do it when you're at your busiest, you can do it anytime. And we are constantly waiting for that next step, that that next pause in life. Y'all, my one-on-one clients can vouch. There is no pause. Life always keeps happening. Life always keeps happening, whether it's getting sick, whether it's breaking a bone, whether it's somebody passing that you love, whether it's work is nuts and busy, whether it doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is, whether you have kids and they're all involved in all this shit, it doesn't matter. What matters is that it's always going to be happening. Life is always going to be happening and there is no good quote unquote time. I always remember my dad used to say, if you wait until you're ready to have kids, you'll never have children because you'll never be ready. I thought, I didn't really understand. I get it now, but I didn't really get it back then. Totally what he meant by that. Um, Because somehow we always figure out a way to make it work, right? We always figure out the extra money that they need for the sports, uh, all the extra stuff. Like today, I just had to go buy my son black pants and black shoes for his concert that he has, you know, like it's absolutely crazy. And yet somehow we make it work and we figure it out. So also speaking of, I know he doesn't listen to this podcast, but I'm going to give a shout out to my oldest who turns 15 today, his apparent golden birthday. Didn't realize this was a thing, but he turns 15. So that's pretty cool. Um, Okay. So we are going to get into today's topic. Uh, I I should just say all the links for those things are in the show notes. So if you want more information on it, there is a link specific for Black Friday deals. You can go ahead, click that link, and it'll give you all the information that you need. And then if you have questions, there's also a link in there to schedule a call with me to conversate because I think it's important that we make sure that we are, you know, in alignment with each other and that you understand what you're signing on for. So there's also a call you can schedule. Okay, so now into today's topic. This is something that, you know, I, 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 always, I always say this, but I always talk about this with my business. And, you know, it's hard because I don't always know what I'm doing in my business or 
what I'm learning in my business is there isn't actually right or wrong. It's what works for me. And I think that we come into this health journey because, you know, I was just even on a call with a, with a lady this week uh, on Monday and she kept saying over and over, I just, I just, I know what I need to do. I, I just need to do it. I, I know what I need to do. I just need to, I just, I got to pull the trigger. I just got to do it. Right. And here's the deal because she thinks she knows what she needs to do. She expects that she should just be able to do it with no help, no accountability, nothing. And that is probably the very worst idea because I think a lot of times once we start getting into the things, you don't always know what to do. And I'll say this, this person particularly did have a coach. She had a coach and she worked with the coach for seven months, right? <clears throat> Oftentimes seven months is not enough. I have clients I've been working with going on 18 months, 24 months. Why? Well, that one thing I mentioned in the very beginning, life is always happening. And we're not always sure how to maneuver through certain things and phases of that life, okay? And how to then stay on track. Sometimes we just like the accountability. Sometimes we just like the community, whatever that case might look like, okay? But I'm going to say for most people, seven months is barely enough to scratch the surface of what we actually need to get to, especially if you're a person that has struggled with weight multiple times, multiple years, done all the things, and really honing in. Because I'll tell you what, seven months, bad habits creep in really fucking quick. They creep back in really fucking quick, okay? And so this This woman that I had a conversation with, it's like she expected to be an expert because she had a coach. She expected that she should just be able to do it all because she quote unquote knows what to do. She just needs to do it. And that's that. And even for people, more so for people that have never had a coach, you guys come into this world expecting like you, like you're going to be an expert. Like you're just going to like pick up the paintbrush and paint like Van Gogh. No, but that's the expectation. That's the standard that we hold ourselves to is that we should just know. And we expect to be that way. But that's not really how this works. I am eight years into this journey and I'm still technically, I mean, I'm an expert when it comes to education, right? But there are still things that I lack on or I fall through with or I step off the path for and I have to step back on for and life happens and all these things that I have to maneuver around and business and children and family and husband and all sorts of work, whatever. And that's just reality of it. So even as an quote unquote expert in this field, somebody said, with with your expert opinion, right? (laughs) Right. And that's, it's kind of funny for me to hear it that way because I don't, always think of myself as an expert, even as an expert, I have to always evaluate my expectation that I have because even knowing what to do, sometimes it doesn't make it simple or easy to pull the trigger and make it happen. And so when we come into this space, we've done all the things. I've been on every diet. I know what I need to do. I know I have to eat protein. I know I have to drink water. I know I have to sleep. Okay. But there's still a gap from knowing and doing. And there's a reason why you are not able to commit or follow through the majority, not perfectly, but most of the time. There's a reason you cannot do that. I'm not going to lie. Today, my dog, he's been a dick all day. He's been an asshole. He has frustrated the fuck out of me. There are many times today I wanted to go face first into the bag of sour cream and cheddar chips but I didn't. Not because I didn't want to, but because I have tools in place that I have learned over the last eight fucking years of doing it over and over and over and over again, of recreating this path in my brain to tell me like, this doesn't solve the problem that you're having. Like me going face first into a bag of chips doesn't solve my problem of my dogs being a dick. Like that doesn't help me. (laughs) It will make me feel good in this little teeny tiny moment. It will give me a nice little dopamine hit. And then I'm going to feel like shit because it's like, why did you do that? You know, that doesn't help the situation. Chips do not help dog. Chips do not help dog. So I did not do it. Right? 
But yet the expectation is, you know, you're not supposed to do that. So you just think that you're not going to do that. And you expect that you're going to be an expert in that situation. And that's kind of how I felt like this conversation went with this woman yesterday was just her expectation was, well, I know I'm supposed to drink this amount of water. Now, I will say, I don't like blanket statements. I talked about this in my group coaching call last night. I don't like blanket statements. Oh, drink 100 ounces of water, 10,000 steps, blah, 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 eight hours of sleep, this, 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 right? Well, everybody's different. So everybody's body needs different things. <clears throat> and so I, I don't like blanket statements like that. But then she went back to drinking maybe 40 to 60 ounces, which that's probably not enough, actually. 40 ounces, definitely not enough. 60 ounces is like huh, bare minimum bare minimum for most adults. Okay. So even doing the thing that she did and having a coach for seven months, and she said, I really honed in on this hundred ounces of water. As soon as that coach left, boom, there went the habit. Right. And I've talked about this before, maybe, maybe not on this podcast, but I've talked about it. In my group coaching calls is a, a habit formed out of a place of resistance takes 478 days or some fucking ridiculousness like that. A habit made out of resistance, meaning you wake up every day not wanting, not willing, not wanting to do the thing that you're going to do is 400 and like some odd days to get an actual habit. None of this 21 day bullshit. Guys, that's fake. That is, again, some blanket fucking number. Oh, 21 days to form a habit. No, that's horse shit. That is not true. And out of resistance, meaning I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to drink this water. I don't want to track my food. I don't want to do this thing over here. I don't want to go train. I don't want to lift weights because I'll get bulky like a man. I don't want to eat the protein. I want to say yes to all the donuts. <laughs> when we... We, when we have that mentality going into trying to create a new habit and we don't want to do it and there's all that resistance, it's ridiculous. That's over a year to create a habit. And I've talked about the fact that like I wanted to start making my bed. I wanted a, a, my bed made every day. So I just woke up one day and started doing it. I just woke up. It's like, okay, cool. Now we're doing it. Awesome. Excellent. That habit took a lot less time because I didn't do it out of resistance. It's something I wanted to go for. When you really want to go change your life, you when you really want to go and, you know, it, it's not always fun, don't get me wrong, but when you want it to happen, it happens a lot easier because you're not having any resistance against it. I, I have a couple of clients right now. I have one client I just signed on who is like head first, face first, feet first, all in cannonball, right? She's all in cannonball, doing the thing, doing all the things. And that's cool. That's so cool because, because while it's hard, it, it's going to be hard still for her to make changes it's like, okay, yes, tracking my food is hard, but this is something I want because I want to change my life. Getting up 30 minutes earlier to go to the gym is going to be hard, but I want it. So it's going to change my life. And that is going to take a lot less time to fix or change because the resistance isn't the same. And so when we have resistance around something, that makes the change, the habit, even harder to get to. Yet the expectation is this is just going to wake up and fucking do it. And it's not that fucking easy. Again, as I always said, if this was so easy, everybody would be fucking walking around like a Scooby snack. Okay. If all these things worked, if all these fucking fad diets worked, if all perfection was the thing, right? If that was the case, if all those things were so simple or so easy, everybody be walking around with a six pack of abs, looking buff as fuck, feeling confident as hell. And I'm telling you, 
It's not happening. It's not happening. Women are not confident. Women are not happy with themselves. They're not happy in their marriages. They're not happy with who they are. They're not happy with how they've let themselves, quote unquote, let myself go. Women are not happy on a whole. I see it every fucking day on social media. I hear it. Ooh, this bothers me so badly. When I hear it all talked about, and when I catch myself talking about like that to myself, it's like here I am preaching to women not to talk like this to themselves, and here I am doing it. That's that's a work in progress. Am I perfect? Nope. Am I better than I used to be? Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Do I always feel so great about my body? No, I don't. I think that's okay. I don't think you always have to feel fucking stellar about your body, but I do feel like you can do a better job of talking about your body. I hear all the time. I hear it all the time. Where was I this last weekend? I don't remember. Hmm. I can't even remember where I was. <laughs> I just heard all nothing but negative shit from people and their body from women. You know? And so it's it's just like we we hold this expectation that we are going to be perfect and an expert in these circumstances and situations when we're not. And even people like me who are quote unquote experts, the only thing that we have cracked the code on is figuring out how to maneuver through those situations. We didn't we didn't crack the code on not having life happen. <laughs> we didn't we didn't crack that code. We, we just cracked the code on how to maneuver through that life. That's all we did. And that's imperative. That is non-optional in this. It's non-optional to crack that code to figure out how, man- how to maneuver through this life when life comes at you and still make yourself a priority and still focus on what you can. I have another client who is having to go back who is having some family stuff going on and she's having to go back home very unexpectedly. And it's like, she, she sent me a message today. I'm actually going to read you this message because I thought this was super powerful and I'm not sharing with you who it is. So that's okay. You're never going to know, but I'm going to share this with you. And this is an audio transcript because it's technically a, um, what's it called? It's technically a, uh, an audio clip. Um, and I will preface this as her check-in was today. So I, her check-in response was given today and it was about just focusing on what you can focus, giving yourself grace, being patient with yourself and allowing yourself to feel things that you need to feel so that you can work through things that you need to work through. And it doesn't have to be so rigid and get in your steps and get in your protein and get in your water and get in your movement and get in your this and make sure you're sleeping and make sure you're not eating things that you're not supposed to eat and all these things, right? Um, so she's like, when I go to X place this weekend, I'm not worried about going off and indulging in some comfort foods and coming back and not being able to step back on the path as you call it, which is so appropriate. I have confidence now that I'm going to go home and I'm going to be smart and I'm going to track because tracking is something that has never been hard for me, but I'm going to track and I'm going to enjoy my foods, my home comfort foods that I will have the opportunity to have. I'm not going to worry about and stress about it. I'm not going to be like, oh no, I'm never going to be able to get back on the wagon when I get back home. Like it's the holiday season and I'm going home for this reason and I'm not worried at all. I have all the confidence in the world and myself and this process and I just had to share that with you because I knew you'd appreciate it. That was a message from her today. That's somebody who is not an expert. And she doesn't think she's an expert, but she's doing the damn thing. Every fucking day, she's showing up for herself imperfectly, but she's showing up. And what she's saying is, I have the confidence to do what I need to do, and I know that I can indulge when I, when I want because I'm not worried about this derailing me so far, as we call it, falling off the wagon. We're getting back on the horse. She's not worried about it because the things that she has done and the habits that she has put in her in, into place for her have legit 
come from a place of want and desire to change her life. She hasn't had resistance. She didn't set some unreal expectation coming into this coaching container that she knew it all. She'd done it all. She had done everything and then some. Lost weight, gained it back. Lost weight, gained it back. Every fad diet. I'm, I'm probably going to have her on here. I've already told her this. I think I'm going to have you on my podcast because she's an incredible testament to this process. When you choose you imperfectly. When you choose you imperfectly, this is what happens. There's nothing special about her. I mean, she, I think she's amazing, but she's not any different than me. She's, I'm not any different than anybody else out there. I'm just your average fucking human being working through life like everybody else, trying to be happy, trying to live my best life, trying to be the best person I can. She's not any different. There's nothing like, you know, I don't mean to say it, this is the coming, like I don't want this to come across me. There's nothing special about her. She doesn't have some like, I don't know, third eye or like extra set of, she doesn't have a clone that like meal preps. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing. She works full time. She has children. Like she, she's just your, your average, your mom who wanted to change her life, who chose her imperfectly. And she went all in on herself. She literally jumped feet first, all in. And now going through a very kind of hard experience in her life again where she has to travel and and she's going to be back around big emotions and things like that. She's confident in herself. She knows where she can, can let go and where she, you know, what I always call push and pause, where to push and when to pause. She knows those. She's learning that about herself, which is fucking cool. So fucking cool. So here's the thing, though. When we set this expectation to be an expert at things, we automatically think that we know everything. And this is a problem when somebody comes in very uncoachable. Well, I already know how to do, I already know how to track my water. I already know, I already get enough water in. Oh, okay, well, let's let's see what you average in the next three weeks. Oh, you're only at 30 ounces. That's interesting. Thought this was not an issue, right? Which is okay because what what this really ends up showing us is like, where are our holes that we can plug that are like the simplest? We call it low-hanging fruit, right? What's the simple, like getting in a little bit more water is one of the easier things to do. We don't necessarily have to block time off and drive somewhere or, you know, have extra thinking power to track food or whatever, right? Water's pretty fairly simple. Hey, let's get some water. Hey, let's go to bed 10 minutes earlier. Cool, right? These are low-hanging fruit things that are kind of easier to fix, right? But one thing I can tell you is I had to fucking relearn anything and everything I knew I thought about weight loss because I knew and ask my husband, I knew that lifting weights was going to make me bulky. I knew that I needed him to program me specific things because that's what I needed to do to lose weight. I knew that I could out train a bad diet. I knew that I can still have Starbucks every day and lose weight. False. I mean, it's not entirely false, but not the Starbucks I was eating and drinking. Not though. <laughs> Once I realized how many, <laughs> what I was drinking, I was like, oh, That tall, hot chocolate that I was drinking with no whip was like 310 calories. Oh, whoops. My bad. (laughs) I had to relearn everything I knew because I was not an expert. I thought I knew for nine months. I talk about that first nine months. Y'all, that nine months is the plague of my last fucking weight loss journey. I fucking can't stand those nine months. I cannot, I'm like still so bothered, right? That I didn't do it sooner, that I just didn't listen to my husband, that I just didn't pull the trigger sooner. I'm so mad at myself. How many times have you thought, Ooh, I need to hire this woman. Yeah, maybe I need to hire this one. No, not yet. And you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait. Now you're two years later, two years later. There are people that have reached out to me two years ago that I still see on Facebook and Instagram that are not any different than what they used to be. They are the same. 
because they didn't choose themselves imperfectly. And I had to relearn all of that. And I can sit here and I can be angry about it or I can just pivot. And I, that's what I did. At nine months, my husband sent that book home and away I went. And I pivoted and I pivoted hard, not in like a sharp left turn, but I was like, okay, now this is where I'm at. And this is, and I dedicated myself and I did it out of a want and not out of a forced or I have to go do this thing. And it stuck. Because I wanted to change my life. I was fucking tired of being how I was. I was fucking tired of being overweight. Fucking tired of telling my husband I didn't want to have sex with him and didn't want him to touch me. Fucking tired of it. I was tired of it. So I did something about it. I fucking had to change my life. Tired that I couldn't keep up with the kids. Tired that I was just, I felt like shit. Like literally that my neck fat was choking me. Tired of it. I didn't want it anymore. So I chose to do something about it. But in that choice, I had to relearn because what I thought I knew, I had no fucking clue. I had no idea what I was doing. And that was a a very long curve that took me to learn because, again, people like me didn't exist eight years ago, really, very few. And that was just sucky. That was sucky for me. And, and, and I can go back and say, man, if only I would have just listened to my husband nine months sooner, but you know what? I had to get there in my own time. And so do you, you have to get there on your own time. You, you really do. And the moment you get there, you're like, damn, why did I wait? Damn it, damn it, damn, damn. <laughs> why did I wait so long to do this? Well, you got to get there because it really has to come from a place of want, which is, you know, kind of full circling back to why I do not any longer force a yes you have to answer me by x date uh, on a call or you have to tell me today if you want to sign up for coaching on a call because if I have to force you and pull you in I'm going to have to force you to do everything that you're going to have to do and I don't want that I want you to choose yourself I want you to choose to do the hard things imperfectly when you don't want to because it's what you have to do not because I'm like okay get your water in Check it off the box. Okay, get your this in. No, I don't, I don't want to be that coach. I will push you. I will push you out of your comfort zone. I will make you think, but I will not force you to do anything. I cannot. You have to choose on your own to do things. And that's tough. That's really hard. So that's the thing. You expect to be an expert. And you have to actually expect to relearn everything you already know or everything you think you know about this process. Because I'm telling you, even last night at my group coaching call, um, one of the one-on-one clients I just signed on that I've talked about like six times, (laughs) um, she was talking about how she went out to dinner this weekend. She sent me a message. This is the cool thing about the one-on-one part is that you get access to me. So she sent me a message. She's like, I don't know. This is, I'm going out for dinner. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. Like, oh, great. Do you know where you're going? Yep, cool. I go look up the menu. And all I did was say, what do you normally get here? And what are you thinking about having? Me telling her what to eat doesn't, re- it doesn't teach her anything. She's got to relearn how to do this. So she told me like two different things. I said, oh, that both are great options. Here's some other things that you could actually consider on this menu. And so I gave her some things that Me personally, as somebody that pays attention to what the menu is, I gave her some options that I would choose. Like, oh, I would actually consider this because this is why, and I would consider that. So for future reference, if that's something that sounds delicious, great. You can try those things. That was relearning moment. And she said that last night. She's like, yeah, I just have to, I have to relearn. And it's a matter of retrusting yourself that you, you do know. And you are knowledgeable. The, the client that sent me this message today is trusting herself. She's confident in herself. She's, she has now done it for the last almost six months that she is confident that she can do it again, even in the midst of a very hard time in life right now where she's not quitting. She's not giving up. She's not She's not saying, I don't want to talk to you anymore because this is too hard and ghosting me and and whatever. She's not, in fact, she's leaning in. She's leaning in on the support that she has. 
and and it, the thing that I told her in her check in today was just like, I know you know this, but I'm going to tell you again that it's okay to process emotions and process your feelings and take time to do the things that you need to do so that you can get back on the path when you're ready and and moving forward. And I will say this, when we do things like that, you're actually not really getting off the path. You're really not just taking that step to the side. As as she said in in this message, she's going to keep tracking. Oh, that's, then she's not actually getting off the path. She is still taking that step forward. She's still on the fucking path. She's still going. She's not pausing. She's not stopping. It just looks different. Maybe the trees changed color. Maybe the flowers are different where she's at right now. Maybe there was a little bend in the road. Cool. She's still there, though. She's still moving. She's not an expert. And she came in with arms wide open. Teach me everything. Teach me anything and everything you can. I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to learn how to do this right. I want to learn. And that's how we change lives, which is pretty fucking cool. So that's my advice for you. Don't come in as an expert. Do not expect to be perfect. Do not expect to know everything. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I thought I knew everything too, and it was a big old slap in the fucking face. (laughs) Where it's like, shit, I don't know anything about doing this the right way. I've always done it that other way. Every other way than the right way. I've always done it that way. That's what I thought I knew. That, that is what I knew. Right? And then you also have to relearn. Be willing to relearn what you're doing. Show up to, to do it. Do it out of want. Do it out of desire to change your life. And this process becomes so much fucking easier than what it is right now. All that resistance. Let that resistance go. And here's the... Something from my badass, you are a badass calendar. Um, And I love this one today. And it says, control is fear. Surrender is faith. Have faith in yourself. Give it in. Let it go. It's okay to not know everything. It's okay to show up. It's okay to get on a call with me and be like, oh my God, everything you talk about is like me. Cool. Awesome. You're my person then. I'm here to help you. And that is what I want to do. So again, Black Friday deals, you guys, are in the show notes. Link is there. Again, there's a link in the link. There's a link in the link if you want more information. If you want anything, you want to get on a call with me for 15, 20 minutes, we talk about it. And let's have a conversation about how I can help you. Maybe it's not that. Maybe you're like, hey, I just need a group coach. Cool, let's get in a group coach. Let's do it. So all those you know, things are available um, if you want them. And if you want to change your life, they're going to be necessary. It's going to require you to show up imperfectly. It's going to co- require you to not expect to be an expert. And it's going to require you to unlearn all the shit you think you know about this process. Because I tell you what, it's fucking eye opening. It's fucking eye opening. Okay. I hope you guys have a fantastic Wednesday. Uh, and I will catch you on Friday. No filter. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. And if you like what you heard, please be sure to screenshot and share it with others who may enjoy it too. Don't forget to click the link in the show notes to see the ways that we can work together to start your journey. Always remember that every day is a new day to do better, be better, and begin better.